This is American Real, where we aim to inspire, empower, and enlighten you through the stories of our guests. Here's your host, Roger Brooks. You're very accessible, but I'd love to hear that from you. What, you know, why, why are you so accessible? Why do you do that? Uh, just like any kid, kid kids want to know what's going on in daddy's room. Uh, what, 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 are you, what are you using that phone for? What's on that phone? They're very, very curious. I've always been curious to see kind of behind the, the scenes. And I promised my mom once, I said, look, if I ever make it, I'm going to let people see behind the scenes. If I was a young kid in one of these cities right now where I'm, I don't have a job, I don't have any money, I, 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 you know, I, I don't want to go back to school, I need to see, man. I need to see that a kid can make it. And, and so that's why uh, I have people on the other side of my life, not just me on stage. Let me guess, you're an entrepreneur looking for ways to grow your business online. And you've probably tried everything to grow your business, including social media, SEO, even paid ads, only to find out that nothing truly works. So what if I told you that writing a book that goes on to become a bestseller is the magic wand, and that you can do it in as little as 30 days, two weeks, or even over a weekend in some cases, without spending more than 10 minutes a day. Would you be interested? My name is Roger Brooks, and I'm the founder and host of American Real TV, where I interview world-class guests to empower others through the essence of story. But I didn't get here overnight, and my mission certainly doesn't end here. Ever since I was a little boy, it's been my dream to empower others through the craft of writing and storytelling. And throughout my life, I came across several mentors who pushed me toward my passion for writing books and helping others to do the same. There is no greater joy than to be working with aspiring authors and to help them establish true credibility within their industry by writing and publishing their first book, which I'm proud to say have all gone on to become bestsellers. Now, you're seeing this video because I just opened enrollment for my new book writing program, where I promise to take you from page one to published in 90 days or less. I will be personally working with you to overcome the same fears and obstacles that kept me from pursuing my dreams all of those years. Simply click on the link below to see how I could help you become a first-time best-selling author. I look forward to seeing you on the inside. This is American Real. I am Roger Brooks. My guest today is Grant Cardone. You are the CEO of Cardone Capital, the creator of 13 best-selling business programs, the author of eight business books, including The 10X Rule, and If You're Not First, You're Last. Forbes listed you as one of the top social media business influencers in the world. Grant, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. This is awesome, man. I, I appreciate the time. Um, I, I have to start out though, like last night you did this special live stream video on Facebook and um, I think there was an imposter out there telling us they were you. Tell us about that. Wait, uh, oh, was it my daughter? That was the one with my daughter on it? <laughs> it was awesome. Oh that, yeah, thank you. Thank that you. was great. I love yeah. watching that because my kids, uh, they're a little bit older, but I, I try to bring them into as much of these things as I do. And I could just see the, the love that was shared there. She was, by the time it was over, she was really into it. She was confident. And um, yeah. that was so great to see. Yeah, she's, you know, she's, she's 11. She's figuring her whole deal out right now. The, both my kids have been fortunate enough to, to share our stage. Um, you know, uh, both of them spoke last year to 12,800 people. They wrote their own scripts. Wow own jokes uh worked out their own timing uh the youngest one wouldn't even let us see it she, they're like nope you're gonna see time with everybody else so uh that, that builds a lot of confidence you know when you can start uh being in front of stages and in front of people and learning how to communicate what works and 
Absolutely. Can you imagine if we went back to that age for us to have that type of, I mean, it's just incomprehensible, isn't it? Crazy. Unbelievable technology if to choose correctly. Absolutely. Um, the other thing I, and, oh, and by the way, her name is Sabrina. Yeah. Sabrina and Scarlett. That, that is, uh, that is my wife's name, Sabrina. So. Oh, wow. Awesome. Love awesome. that name. Um, now, you, you also do something else uh, where you do this Ask Me Anything, the Q&A live segments. And what I love about that is, number one, you seem to really enjoy it. You know, you're, you're present with people. Um, but you make yourself accessible, which I think has been one of the keys to, you know, just watching you from afar to your success. You're very accessible. But I'd love to hear that from you. What, you know, why, why are you so accessible? Why do you do that? Yeah, because, you know, I was a, uh, I was a kid, man. I, I my dad died when I was 10, and there was a guy named Dr. Care, and he was an important person. Uh, and there was other people that my dad knew. He was, he, my dad was, uh, you know, he, he was a middle, he broke through the middle class, into the middle class, and he did everything he could to get connected in the town. He knew everyone. And when my dad died, I thought some of these guys were going to, like, like, help out. Uh, whether it was my uncles or whether it was some of the other friends he had that had some influence. Uh, just like any kid, kid kids want to know what's going on in daddy's room. Uh, what, 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 are you, what are you using that phone for? What's on that phone? They're very, very curious. I've always been curious to see kind of behind the, the scenes. And so those guys never allowed me to see. I, I couldn't find out the people that own the country, uh, you know, that belong to the country club or had a boat or, was taking their kids on skiing trips. I was like, well, how did they do that? So I've always been curious. And I remember 16, 17 years old, I was really angry that they didn't let me see. And I promised my mom once, I said, look, if I ever make it, you know, and by the way, there was no, no way I was going to, like, it was so, it was like another planet. If I ever make it, um, I'm going to let people see behind the scenes. And, and a lot of that is, you know, there, there, there's tremendous amount of downside to doing that. And I, I understand now why people don't do it because you get criticized and right. I'm called a show off and a, and a, and a money, whatever, you know, I, I only care about money yet and blah, blah, blah. And I'm, you know, but if I was a young kid in one of these cities right now where I'm, I don't have a job, I don't have any money, I, I, I you know, I, I don't want to go back to school. I need to see, man. I need to see that a kid can make it. And, and so that's why uh, I have people on the other side of my life, not just me on stage. Yeah, no, that's really important. And look, you're, you're right. I think there is a trade-off, even in my little world you know, that I have, I, I see that at, at my level. So I could only imagine the, the resistance that you see from that, but the good outweighs the bad, right? I mean, it's, you're all in at this point. Yeah, I mean, like, 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 like I've done this so long now that I'm like, okay, I, I'm gonna defend the, the heel even if it's not right. So um, uh, my wife was doing something the other night. She got a lot of criticism for it. She was like, I could tell she was just hurt from it. I'm like, look, do not try to make sense of this. And she's like, God, is this what you feel like all the time? I'm like, yeah, but you cannot try to, you cannot, these people are not talking about you, Elena. They're talking to themselves. They're using you to talk to themselves. And uh, I'm screaming right now, man. I mean, all, all you got to do is turn any channel on. This is a, this is a, this is a uh, business channel right here, but I'm sure he's got an opinion. That's Steve from Apple. He's got an opinion about some. Everybody's got an opinion right now, including me. And my half the people are going to like my opinion, and the other half are going to disagree with it. So, Grant, can you share? What, do you mind sharing us your, your opinion? Of what's happening? Yeah. This is not a new thing. Like everybody's like, "Oh my God, I can't believe this is happening." This has happened before. All you got to do is. Like read a little history. And it's not just an American thing. I know we want to make this an American thing. America's racist and America's awful. And we've had slaves here. And this was our original slint sin. Look, I got a lot of black front friends. I'm an Italian American. You know, we were called Dagos, Wops, and Greaseballs. 
And uh, slavery is not earth. You know, you, you, you look around this planet and you start wondering, man, is the whole damn place a prison? Um, so, yeah, while I feel for anyone that is held down, um, held back, I know that the only way out is to own the land. If you don't like the way the game's played, create your own game and win at it. Like own the board. You have to own the board in Monopoly. Any game, by the way, any game. If you're not winning, it's not going to feel good. Games where you can't win and don't win, they're not fun. And so the education system sucks. That's not a new thing. Why? It's, it's, it's a fucking scam to the, to the, it's an $850 billion a year business. Okay. It's a scam. Food system's terrible. Like uh, the prison incarceration system is a business. That is a business. Flexing your out is a business. Okay. It is, we have more prisoners in, in this country than all the other planets combined. Uh, the middle class is a scam. Buying a house is a prison for prisons. Like, look, look what's happening right now. If I turn this screen and show you the stock market, the riots go up and so does the stock market. Not a new thing, by the way. 1968, 1968, Martin Luther King had just been killed. Kennedy was killed. We had unemployment riots across the country. Vietnam was going off. And we had a stock market that was going, like, vertical. Because when we distract people, uh, the smart guys are in the bank robbing it. It's the old magic act. Look at the fancy girl over here. Look at the saw over here about to cut something. And while they're doing all this distraction, while kids are looting and rioting and people are protesting, uh, look, half those protesters are there for that. And I, I'm not talking about the looters. I'm talking about white people like me that are going there with their little phones because they want to be in the action. They're not, they're not, they're not on the team, man. They're there, they're going to the team. And so this is all terrible, by the way. All this is terrible, but there's a lot of terrible things happening every day. People don't make enough money. Then they take the money they do make, they give it to the bank. The bank doesn't keep the money. Okay, education's a scam. You got to borrow money. You got to borrow money to, to, to learn a job, to learn about a job that doesn't even exist by the time you get out of college. You spend four or five years trying to get it. Like people, people, people are just maybe, maybe to, to the fact that it's, uh, that, that it's set up. Maybe not, but you can't just blame one group of people. And, and, and I, I felt like this as a kid, by the way. If I was 18 years old, it burns to the ground. I shamefully admit I would be burning buildings to the ground. I'd be, I'd be shooting, I'd be shooting buildings. Who knows what I'd be doing? I'd probably be running around with a gun acting like an idiot because I was angry and I was hopeless. You start owning buildings and you start paying property taxes. You're like, shit, I'm going to defend my building and shoot it. And that's, that's what people of color need to own the property. They need to become owners now, the assets, not watches in cars. Uh, every group in this country that's made it, the one thing in common is they started owning property. In Miami in 1930, 1940, and 19, Jewish people were not allowed on Miami Beach. That's where I'm at today. There was restaurants that had all views and no Jews. And what did the Jews do? They didn't get angry. They united and they bought Miami Beach. Oh, wow. So, so people, you got to become a banker now. You can't just be a rapper anymore. You can't just be a ball player anymore. You can't just be a hard worker. You can't just be a carpenter. You have to buy the land, buy the property. You got to control your city. So that's my opinion. Anyway, that's a long. No, and it's way, great. Everybody's got. Everybody's got them. You know, everybody's got them. Absolutely, but it's good to hear. Look, I mean, you're 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 someone of influence today. Your voice matters, and people listen. And look, I mean, you lived your life, and and you have an opinion. I want to know though, because you are, you know, at the top. 
how do you feel, like, where do you feel you fit in? You know, are you, because you own property, because, you know, you're, you, you employ a lot of people, um, because you have education systems out there, do you feel like you're doing everything you can be doing right now to help those, be, you know? No, I'm definitely, I'm definitely not doing enough, but, but, you know, first thing I do is I take care of me. And I, I, I shamelessly, uh, th again, this is look behind the curtain, you know, look behind the curtain in my life is not look at my plane. It's like, I tell you what I'm doing. Like I'm not, you know, some guys say, Hey, we, I don't make any money online, but they're charging for their speaking thing. I tell you, dude, I charge for everything. Like I make money. Okay. First thing I do is take care of my family financially. Then I, 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 I can take care of myself and my family until we have an overflow. The cup floweth over. And then I'm like, okay, who else can I help? I can't help anybody if I'm worried about paying my own bills. I so number that. one, I'm taking care of myself. Number two, if there's money left over, how can I help? Uh, this is called Snoop, Magic Johnson, uh, Meek Mill, uh, Steve Harvey, Damon Jonas, the guys. I want to educate a million of these kids, kids of color, disenfranchised underprivileged kids of color in these cities and I want to teach them how to make money they never have to go back to school you don't even have to finish high school if you don't want to I can teach you how to make money online I can teach you how to make money with no money I can teach you how to buy buildings with no money I can teach you how to control your neighborhood I want to do a money program we're all in real and and the fact that I'm white very important because we need to show that white people don't just care about writing a check. Writing a check's easy, man. Me, me going to Bal inner city Baltimore and, and sitting down with a bunch of 17 year old kids and saying, hey, knock off your bullshit. Let's go make some money. Because I know that's what you um, And if that was me and Snoop doing it, every one of those guys, by the way, man, I'm behind you 100%. So like the stuff about the little blackout, the little blackout thing that the, the, the music industry wants to do one day, all they're doing all they're doing is taking care of, of, of their musicians uh, the way the musicians feel. What you do on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, what you do is more important than, than an opinion you have. Yes. And so I don't know if I can pull this thing off, but I'm going to try to pull it off where, where we educate a million kids. Again, my opinion means nothing. What am I going to do? You know, and, and I can't do anything for anybody if I don't do for me first. No, I, Grant, and look, Hey, I'm 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 a white guy. I want to help too. So if there's anything I could do to help you or lean on, you know, if we could get more people together, I'm there for you. So I think that's wonderful. You're doing what you're doing. Yeah. The other thing is, you know, we looked at uh, this past weekend. SpaceX and NASA had a, had a private, you know, uh, um, government partnership. We need to see more of that, don't we? That we need people of, in business to help our government so we can make some changes in education and all these things that you just listed earlier, right? Do you see yeah. that being crucial to the success of our country? Totally. Look, 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 these, the, the guys, I would go on if he wasn't doing SpaceX. I, he, 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 he did that launch this weekend, right? Yes. I wouldn't know Oprah if she didn't have a team, if she wasn't successful. I would not know Steve Harvey if he wasn't successful. I would not know uh, Rock if he was not, went from $7 to where he is. To, I wouldn't know Kevin Hart if he hadn't put some money together. So the people that change the world, the people that are doing, putting rockets in the air, like we're talking about this stuff from the ground, man. Like let's, let's pay attention to success. We're being distracted. And so every time in my lifetime, I'm 60 years old. I mean, I've seen a few things. I've not seen everything and I don't think, and I'm not the most intelligent person. I haven't done, you know, world history in years. I'm not an economist. Um, but you know, look how little attention was even given to the rocket launch. Bro, we put a rocket. Rocket went up, comes back down. Like, it's crazy. It is. And, and, and so Elon's not talking about all this going on in the cities. There's millions of people doing this, by the way, and there's not. There's just millions of people sitting in homes. Oh, what do you think? What do you think? 
when everybody ought to be working. We got 40 million people out of work, man. No doubt. Yeah, no wonder. Like every time we have this kind of thing happen, what happens? We get distraction. Okay. There's nobody talking about 40 million people out of work right now. There's nobody, nobody talking about millions of people that got sick from this thing, wherever this thing came from. What are we talking about now? Black or white. Burn buildings down. Kill a cop. Okay. Finishing any of this. I'm just saying, hey, guys, watch for the magic act. Who's stealing what right now? Okay, who's stealing what? This is an old common trick of uh, a thieves. Uh, burn this down over here and rob the bank over there. And, and, and Wall Street will make millions of dollars while, while people are being distracted on TV. Uh, about. So anyway, the success shines bright. We need to, I need to see more examples of success, not failures. Yeah, and you know, right on your, your website, when you go to the Grant, Grant Cardone website, it says 10x your business income and life, right? But you can't do any of that if you're distracted. And, and you, like you said, it starts with me. You have to take care of yourself first. But I'd love to go one step deeper, and that is, especially with you, mindset. I know you have a deep mindset for everything you do. I've been following it. And I, I, I'd love if you could just give us a little bit of insight into when that when did that switch happen for you grant i mean i've heard the story of you know when you had to get your book done like that was a big moment was there can you tell us a story where where you felt like it clicked and you're like okay i get it and this is and you haven't looked back yeah so so yeah so uh i always look back but <laughs> um but i look forward more than i look backwards right like like uh because because I'm always second guessing myself too. Um, when I when I look when I went to a treatment center for drug addiction, I was a I was a full out like drugs all day long. Like I didn't do drugs. I did eight o'clock in the morning. I did them when I woke up. I did them for lunch. I did them after lunch. I did dinner. I did them after dinner. During dinner at night, like. And I went to the treatment center. And they're like, look, you have an addictive personality. I said, yeah, okay. When I left the treatment center, I, I thought I was because of that. Uh, about four days after I left the treatment center, I'm like, you need to, you need to, this, this faucet that you have to turn it off. You need to redirect it. Uh, today, I know that that addictive quality, that pit bull mentality, that I cannot let it go, that I'm a, I'm a cannot get it off of me. I can't sleep at night. Uh, I wake up in the middle of the night having a thought or an idea. Um, and I have to write it down. Like that, that is something I have learned not to resist anymore. And to go with it, to move with it, and to, and to move with the flow of it. Don't try to it and hold it back and resist it. I heard what you resist will persist. Mm. But the truth is what you resist will pervert itself. It will, it will aberrate. It will, it will, it will start to become something crooked and, and, and ugly rather than just using the energy of it. So, um, and, and then, and then you got to make it successful. You can't, you can, if you're going to reroute the energy, it needs to become something that rings a register. I just make noise. Uh, that happened. I was 20, 25 years old, and, and uh, I can't say I hadn't looked back. I, I, I question it all the time. The people around me question it constantly. Uh, you, much, you leave this alone. Don't say that. Like, constantly. I get it. I'm not talking about people outside my circle. I'm talking about people inside. Um, How do you handle that? Uh, I just got to know that it's coming, right? I got to know it's coming, and you got you got to you got to be aware and understand that the people on your team, you know, are not wearing your jersey all the time. Yep. And 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 just because they wear the jersey forty hours a week, there's another hundred a week. They're not, and they're reading other stuff, and they're being in, infiltrated and and doubt and doubt doubt. It's just a human condition. It's not a 
or bad. It is just what it is. Even wives, wives and husbands and kids, they're going to wonder. Uh, I'm a Scientologist. My daughter, my 11-year-old, saw that on the internet about Scientology. She, she doesn't know what to believe. Uh, then she sees something good. She's like, oh, wow. Okay. I said, I want to show you something. I pulled up a site, uh, my name, and in, uh, Investimedia, or one, one of these invest sites, these sites that calculate people's net worth. I said, I want to show you something, okay, on this. <laughs> there was like 11 things in this one article that are not true, and I have the proof to show my daughter they're not true. See, people that don't understand that news is fake, they are, they, they, oh, it's fake. No, you, it's not fake until you see that it's fake about you. It's wrong, your height is wrong, your network's wrong, what you own is wrong, what you did is wrong, the job is wrong, your name's spelled wrong. Like, like there was 11 things in this article that I sat down with Sabrina and says, this is incorrect. Let me show you what the truth is. Here's another piece of data. That's what they said. This is, and then she was like, oh my God. You know they could print stuff that's false, right? So that's the world we live in. It's not. It's not a new problem, by the way. People have been spend, you know, creating division amongst people uh, for years uh, to to in false information. I was just going to say, when these distractions happen, what how, do you just you know? How do you get? How do you deflect them? Dude, I just, I just, I'm gonna, I'm. I, 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 uh, I was called a racist on an Instagram live yesterday. I invited the lady in to talk to me. Somebody called me a scammer. I invite them into my, 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 my Instagram. I'm like, hey, well, have I ever scammed you? Have I ever stolen anything from you? Have I ever taken anything from you? Most of them won't even answer it. Okay. This lady said I was a racist. I, I invited her in. She comes in. What, why, why would you say that to me? Why would you call me that? How do you know? How do you know anything? What, what did I do that, that blah, 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 right? And then by the time the thing's over, she apologized. Yeah. The other punks don't come in. Just anonymous little troll that, that are haters that probably aren't even haters. So I don't try to deflect, right? I'm aware that it's going to happen. It's part of the human condition. Uh, most people are not talking about me or you. They're talking about themselves and what they don't do and need to do. And... Um, but it hurts. I mean, it hurts while you're getting it for the first time, the second time, the hundredth time. It hurts. And then, all right, no big deal here. It's all the same people. I'm glad Nobody you just, You know, like I'm accused of working too much, you know, but, but nobody, nobody that works as poor has ever accused me of that. You know, I, I'm accused of wanting great things in my life. Uh, I was on it uh, two weekends ago. The, it, it, I think they paid $55 million for it. He does not accuse me of wanting too much. Uh, you know, he gets on my plane. He's like, yeah, we had two of these. They, they own a huge retail chain in, in, uh, in, on the planet. We own two of these and we're ordering this. It, it's, it's, a, it's a different conversation, right, than, than the one I grew up in where family might be like, why do you need this? Well, I need it because I can't fly. And American Airlines. And I did 19 countries last year. Why, why do you need to go to 19 countries? <laughs> so that I can meet people that live in other lands. Yeah. So, wow. so again, you, you gotta, you, sell or be sold. I wrote, I wrote a book called Sell or Be Sold. I need to settle on who I am, what my mission is. Am I a good person? I, I don't need you to validate me. Okay, you validate me as a good person. Okay, so what? You validate me as a bad person? It should be so what? But if you like, if you like people's admiration, it's going to be a problem when you don't get it. Man. It cuts both ways. Yeah, powerful, Grant, powerful. This is great. Uh, I know... I know you're short on time today, so look, I, I appreciate the time that you've given us. A couple of quick questions. What's up for 10X this year? I know everyone's wondering. What we're doing Vegas. We're doing Vegas. We already have select uh, uh, ready to go. I can't, I'm not going to give you their names right now, but big, big names. 
Um, there'll be 12,000 people there. They'll wear a mask. Most people will not be wearing masks. Uh, people are like, how are you going to do that, man? You know, trust me, there's 12,000 people who wait to be in a stadium for three days talking about two And um, the world will go back to sitting in chairs next to one. I got 118 employees here. We, we're already seeing our payroll and our employee count here. Um, there's nobody. I can't see a mask in the room. Uh, so 10x will be it, it will be the best 10x I've ever done. It'll be 2021 in Las Vegas at Mandalay Bay. Awesome. And we'll do our part to promote that as well, Grant. Look, I would love to do an in-person someday as a part Let's two. Let's do it. Where, where, do you, where, where are you, Roger? Where, where I'm do you in live? New York. I'm in upstate okay. New York. But uh, we could, you know, we take our show on the road, so to speak. So I could come down to Florida. Come down, come down to Miami. We'll do it here in my studio. We'll put, just bring your flag with you. We'll, we'll put your flag on my wall. Absolutely. We'll do it. Grant Cardone, you're a class act. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. Thanks, Grant. Appreciate it Thanks very so much. much. Thanks. Be take great. Care. All right. Take care. Thanks for tuning into American Real. Be sure to visit our website, AmericanReal.tv, or search for us on iTunes or YouTube for past episodes. While you're there, please rate us or leave us a review, as that helps others find our show. I am truly grateful and appreciate all of your support. If you'd like to be part of our inner circle or want one-on-one -on -one coaching, check out the American Real Learning Academy, where we have self-help groups and courses so you can build the best you. We also have a new Facebook group where you can connect with high achievers from around the world. If you want to go even further, maybe you're determined to write your own book or launch your own podcast, contact me today to see if we can help. You can reach me through Instagram or Facebook or email me directly at roger at americanreal.tv. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week.